We began our civility conference in Washington, D.C. with President Renard Johnson laying a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier on behalf of the Texas Lyceum. It was an extremely moving ceremony and something um, we were all proud to, to witness. Um, following that, many of our guests were able to tour the United States Capitol, to go on the Library of Congress tours, to be able to visit a brand new museum in Washington, D.C., the National Museum of African American Culture and History. Um, and then on Thursday evening, we had civility in the confirmation process, where Senator Ted Cruz was able to welcome guests and alumni of our organization, um, as well as having Jean Johnson Phillips, um, an ambassador under George W. Bush, and current Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos. The discussion of civility is needed right now. Um, you look at so much of our political discourse, it, it, it's poisonous and partisan, people trying to tear each other down. I think in politics we need a lot more of those Lyceum values up here in Washington. We need a lot more of those Lyceum values in Congress where we can disagree. We can disagree on issues without making it personal, without making it uh, ugly, and, and learn to be friends with those who disagree with us and learn to learn from those who disagree with us. A lot can come from understanding the other person's point of view. And the only way that that can happen is if you enter into a discussion with an open mind and open ears and you're willing to think anew and to try and come up for what's best, come up with what's best for the greater good and not just for yourself or your particular narrow point of view. On Friday, we started our official meeting where we um, had a breakfast with our delegation. It was a reception. We were able to hear primarily from Chairman Mike Conaway, Senator John Cornyn, and Congressman Roger Williams, where he actually touched on the shooting that recently happened at the Republican congressional baseball practice. Our title starts with two letters, U.S. U.S. Representative, U.S. Senator. That means United States. There are no R's and D's in those first two letters. And so when we get here, we should be um, representing our, the folks back home, those who voted for us, and even those who voted against us or didn't vote at all. Uh, we're their representative, and while we've got that pin on, or that voting card, uh, my title starts with U.S., U.S. representative, not Republican representative or Democratic representative. And so that should be the, the one takeaway that I hope folks reinforce with their member of Congress or their senator when they're uh, having exchanges with them. After that, Congressman Pete Olson, an alumni of the organization, gave welcome remarks. Our delegation stands out. We are huge, 36 strong. But if something matters to a person, a Democrat from the Valley, a Republican from the Panhandle will get on board, and vice versa. But that's a great strength. We are the example of civility. The Texas Lyceum leads the way in that. Followed by that, we had Congressman Beto O'Rourke and Will Hurd talk to us about their bipartisan road trip that they took um, just a few months back. They talked about reaching across the aisle and not necessarily sticking to um, partisan politics. You know, I, I think civility begins with uh, respect um, and it continues with spending meaningful time with each other, not just listening and debating, but, but literally breaking bread or eating donuts, spending time in a car, uh, going out for a meal. We need to find a way to come back together again. We were able to hear Ambassador Lyndon Olson, former president of the Lyceum, talk to us about civility and truly how we can apply it um, today in practical terms. Um, something that I think that we could really relate to and take home and apply to our everyday lives. But I think we all need to take kind of a personal assessment of our own language and our own behavior, especially in our civic life. After Ambassador Olson spoke, we were able to hear about how our news had changed. We heard from um, various news outlets on fact checking. We also heard about freedom of the expression on the web um, and how our social media has really played into civility. Well, I think especially when we're talking about civility in online conversations, it's really important for us all to become more aware of the tools and the different platforms that are available to us for the different conversations we might have. Different platforms have different audiences and different tools, and I think we'll all fare a lot better if we are a little bit more intentional about what are we discussing on which platforms. I think it's rough. Uh, I, I see my own Twitter feed and it, it can be very discouraging. Uh, and I think, you know, I think that it'll be very interesting 
um, from like a PhD psychological point of view in a few years just to see how this is impacting humans because I, I don't think the human brain was built for this kind of negative feedback and so uh, I think it's really rough. Um, I don't see any time, I don't see it changing but I do think that uh, for now all we have to do is have thicker skins. During lunch, we were able to hear from one of the ambassadors from Mexico talking about civility with our neighbors. He primarily touched on issues like NAFTA um, and immigration and border security. So I think that it's a matter of uh, getting this message across and uh, getting people consider that the facts of uh, the importance of Mexico as a valued and a true partner of the United States. We were so excited to wrap up the day with um, our civil solutions panel where they really gave us a charge and talked about how we could um, act differently and apply all of these concepts we had learned throughout the day in our everyday lives as well as um, work at, at home um, and in organizations in which we're involved. I think the bottom line, um, no matter who you are, no matter where you live, no matter what you do, is it's important to listen. It's important to listen respectfully to people who disagree with you. We want to hear people agreeing more on things that matter and how we can actually get there rather than talking about what separates us. I think right now what's happening is our political leaders often feel incentivized to actually go to the extremes you know, and criticize because it plays well with certain core constituencies. And so I think it's really on all of us to ask our public officials to actually be different in that regard. When you speak civilly, you expect other people to do it and hold it as a high priority in your family, in your place of work, uh, your representative in the government, uh, in, in your community, that you that you start talking again about what a priority civility is and how we need to bring it back. We're so excited to be able to provide a private dinner for our Lyceum directors, alumni, and guests to be able to dine at the National Archives where we had the opportunity to really study um, all of the documents that our founding fathers had written um, as well as documents like the Magna Carta. We heard at um, the fireside chat that evening from Amy Walter with the Cook Political Report as well as James Mullen who's the president of Allegheny College um, where they actually started a civil award to recognize those in public life. It's not about just going and doing anything more than just stepping back while an event is happening or an issue is being debated and say, I wonder what it would be like to be arguing this side. What is it like for these people and to understand a little bit more about where they're coming from before having the immediate knee-jerk reaction of, that's fantastic or that's terrible. I hope that we uh, come together as a nation and encourage this generation to embrace politics and to enter public life, uh, to see it as a noble calling. And that's what gives me hope looking to the future, that this generation, if it engages public life, will make a very profound difference. We were able to end the evening with a discussion with Dr. Edna Green Medford and Dr. Denver Brunsman, where they talked to us about presidential promises made and kept. Um, a Lincoln scholar and a Washington scholar truly offered insight into knowing that um, this is not the first time that our country has been uncivil. They left us with hope, knowing that um, we too will overcome what we believe to be challenging times. The purpose of politics and the purpose of public service um, isn't necessarily personal gain or self-interest, it's the common good. Uh, and that was really the foundation of America's Republican system when it was first created. And I think it's really necessary for it to work. I think Lincoln would want us all to remember that civility is easy if we start with compassion and empathy. Uh, if we can put ourselves in the shoes of the other man or woman, uh, if we can understand why they are thinking the way they are, whether we agree with it or not, if we're willing to use language that we don't mind having our own names associated with when we're talking about other people, then everything will be all right.